audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Welcome to On The Rock, God's unchanging word for changing times with Dr. Camille Majdali, Director of Teach All Nations Melbourne, Australia. Dr. Camille lived and studied in the Middle East, served as a principal of a leading Bible college and now travels the world teaching God's word. He has an extraordinary knowledge of the Bible and a dynamic ability to make God's truth come alive in a real, practical way. This episode of On The Rock will give you keys to survive and succeed in the days ahead by hearing and doing the words of Jesus. Jesus, of course, is Lord of all. But we also learn that he's a team player and a team leader. In today's program, we're going to especially focus on this as he calls the Twelve Disciples. Our series is entitled, The Kingly Messiah, Understanding the Gospel of Matthew, Part 1, a verse-by-verse audio commentary, part of our larger Understanding the Bible series. Friends, we believe that when you know and apply God's Word, you're going to live a very blessed life. On the rock, enjoying the presence and comfort of God as you bear fruit for Him in all seasons. So here we have the beginning of Matthew chapter 10. And Matthew chapter 10 is about the life of a disciple. Remember that ultimately the Great Commission isn't merely about soul winning, or shall we say just conversion decisions. That's important, of course. But ultimately what God wants are fruit-bearing disciples. He says, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. Not just go into all the world and get decisions, have a decision card filled out, fill the church with people, even if they don't change spiritually or indistinguishable from the rest of the world. Oh no, he wants disciples. And one thing about disciples, they will not be like the rest of the world. Their light will shine brightly like stars in a dark night. So Matthew chapter 10 is about the life of a disciple. And here in this particular lesson, it's named call of the disciples. Matthew chapter 10 verses 1 to 8. We're going to learn about some of the 12 apostles. Remember, while they're being taught of Jesus, they're disciples. When they're sent forth by Jesus, they are apostles. Apostles are not man-chosen, they are God-appointed, and they are sent by God, and they are anointed by God to preach with authority and to back up the preaching of his word with signs and wonders following, courtesy, of course, of the Holy Spirit. So what we have here is Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, and when he had called unto him his twelve disciples... He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. That verse, Matthew 10, 1, says a lot. He calls the disciples. There were 12 of them. He granted them power against the unclean spirits so that they would be cast out of people because people are far more important than unclean spirits. He wants to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. This is what we call delegated authority. It's authority that God himself has delegated to us. And the sooner we can apply this authority, then the better off we will be. So, what we'll see is there's the call of the disciples, the 12. They had gone from merely being called to chosen because they had said yes when Jesus invited them to follow him. And then we'll have as it were, the first batch of disciples. Now, earlier in Matthew, we learned about James and John, the sons of Zebedee. We learned of Simon Peter and his brother Andrew, and they will, of course, be mentioned again, and they are the more famous and prominent of the twelve. But here in Matthew 10, we're going to hear a little bit more about the rest of them. Now, in most cases, it's just their name will be mentioned, but we do have some background information on some of these, and that will be shared with you forthwith. So the 12 that were raised up by Jesus and then sent forth are going to be given very, very specific commission. They are not going to go 
to the way of the Gentiles. They're not to go to any of the cities of the Samaritans. They are going to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, it's not always going to be like that. But before the resurrection of Jesus, they have a primary focus on Israel. That doesn't mean that Gentiles that come along are going to be refused, rejected, or told to leave. Oh, no. They have been and will be ministered to. But the apostolic ministry first starts with Israel, and then it fans out to the entire world. We're going to read the entire portion from Matthew chapter 10, verses 1 to 8. The lesson is called Call of the Disciples, and the reference, Matthew chapter 10, verses 1 to 8. This is the word of God. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out, and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the name of the twelve apostles are these, the first, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, and James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip, and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the publican, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Lebaeus, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent forth, and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give." The reading is from Matthew chapter 10, verses 1 to 8, and our lesson is labeled Call of the Disciples. Let's begin. This man of action is not going to do the ministry all by himself. Yes, he is the Son of God. He can do anything, but he's also the Son of Man. He's in a human body. He's only got two arms, two legs, two feet, two ears, and 24 hours to his day, he sweats underneath the same sun as us all. So Jesus, the team leader and the team player, is calling his team together. Remember that we read earlier here in Matthew, certain disciples were called, and we've already named them, Peter and Andrew, James and John. A disciple is a disciplined one who is being trained by a master so that by the end of the training process, that disciple will be just like the master. It's also what Jesus requires. It's, in other words of putting it, is that we are following Jesus with all of our heart, all of the time. That's really what a disciple is. Now, at this point, they are called by Jesus to be his disciples. When they say yes to the call of Jesus, they're no longer merely called, they are chosen. And they are chosen to go from being just a disciple, and that's an honorable thing in itself, to being an apostle or apostolos in the Greek. Those who are sent out, who receive power against unclean spirits, and are able to heal all manner of sickness and disease as they cast out the devils from people. Now, really think about it. That is probably the most powerful thing you can do under the sun, is to preach the Word of God, to move in the power of God, and to see God-sized miracles just as we observe in the Gospels. Jesus actually said, not only will we do these things, we will do greater things than these, because he ascends to the Heavenly Father. So the first batch of disciples, Matthew 10, verse 2. These apostles slash disciples number 12. Interesting that there were 12, just like there were 12 sons of Jacob who became the patriarchs for the 12 tribes of Israel or of Jacob. Remember that Israel was Jacob's new name, name given by no one less than God himself via the angel, who I think was God. And that's in Genesis 32, 28. So these guys are 12, just like the sons of Jacob. Simon 
was the first, and his other name is Peter. So we call him Simon Peter. His brother Andrew also was called to be a disciple of Jesus. There we also learn about James and John, the sons of Zebedee, or, as Jesus calls him in another gospel, the sons of thunder. Because I believe Zebedee was roaring with thunder and indignation because his sons had basically walked off the job, mending the nets, being with the boats, because they were all fishermen. They forsook the family business in order to follow Jesus. Very wise on their part, but not without some reaction. James, brother of John, would apparently die a martyr's death as recorded in Acts chapter 12, at the hands of Hera Agrippa, or Herod Agrippa I. John, on the other hand, lived a long life, and according to church tradition, died of natural causes after he returned from exile from the Isle of Patmos, where he received the Revelation, the wonderful book, last book of the New Testament. But, of course, there are more disciples. Matthew 10, verse 3. Lesser-known disciples include Philip, Bartholomew. We think this Bartholomew is also the same guy called Nathaniel, who's described or mentioned in John chapter 1, verse 46. Nathaniel was the one Jesus said is a man without any guile. Matthew, or Matthew Levi, was the publican. Remember, he sat at the receipt of customs collecting the money as people went along the international highway. Jesus called him. He forsook everything, including that table full of change and money, in order to make room for the Savior. Matthew Levi also is this gospel's author, the author of the gospel of Matthew. James, the son of Alphaeus, is also called Cleophas, or Clopas, as described in Luke 24, 18, and in John chapter 19, 25. I'll repeat that. Alpheus, or the son of Alpheus, James, is called Clopas, or Cleopas, in Luke 24, 18, John 19, 25. According to church tradition, he was married to Mary, sister of the mother of Jesus, as described in John 19, 25. Then there are two more disciples, Simon the Canaanite, the third son of Alphaeus and brother of James and Judas, according to Matthew chapter 13, verse 55. Now, was he really a Canaanite? The word that is used is Cana, K-A-N-A, and it means a zealous one, or Luke 6, verse 15, Simon Zelotes, or the zealous one. Now, he may have been zealous for preaching the gospel. Hopefully he was. He may have also belonged to the militant group of Jews called the Zealots. These people hated the Roman occupation of their country, and they hated those who supported the Roman occupation of their country, like the Herodian dynasty. Some would be considered the equivalent of modern-day terrorists. We think that the Zealots were adept at taking knives and slipping them in between the ribs of Roman soldiers as well as the supporters of Rome among their own people in those crowded, windy, narrow streets of Jerusalem. If he truly was a zealot, then his coming as a disciple of Jesus is all the more remarkable. And then we have some more. We have Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot is the only one of the twelve who actually came from Judea, not from Galilee. We believe his village was Kerioth, Kerioth, K-E-R-I-O-T-H. It's called a village of Judah, Kerioth, in Joshua fifteen twenty-five. So, where did Judas get this name Iscariot? We believe it comes from the word Ish. Kerioth, Ish, I-S-H, stands for man, a man. And Kerioth is the village, so he's Iscariot, or ish Kerioth, a man from Kerioth in Judea. So Galileans tend to be very loyal, if not hot-tempered. 
But Judas, the Judean, is the traitor. And now they're called apostles. Acts chapter 10, verse 5. These disciples, these followers of Jesus, now become apostles because they're not just in class with Jesus, watching him do whatever he does in ministry. They're now going to be sent out to replicate what Jesus does in ministry. Remember, as I said earlier, apostles are God-chosen, not man-elected. Jesus gives them specific geographic terms of reference. Don't go to the Gentiles. And remember, Galilee as a region is surrounded by Gentiles, but it's still predominantly a Jewish area. Don't go to the cities of Samaria or the Samaritans, at least not at this time. By the time we get to Acts chapter 8 and the ministry of Philip the Evangelist, yes, Samaria is to be targeted for evangelism, and it is very fruitful, very successful. So you have Galilee, go south of the Valley of Armageddon, and you have Samaria up in the mountains. They were told, don't go to the cities of the Samaritans. South of Samaria is Judea, and of course you'll find Jews there, as well as Jewish people from the house of Israel on the east bank of the Jordan River, at least in some chosen places. That's where they were meant to go. Galilee, Judea, Perea, that's where you will find the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And that's not counting those that lived in the diaspora. So the Samaritans at this point are off limits. After the church is born in the book of Acts, they're to go to all nations. Now, where to go? Jesus says the apostles are to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Israel was God's people, but the way Jesus describes them, they were lost. And Jesus came to help them find God again. Now, what was the message they were to give? Acts 10, 7, tell them the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Therefore, because it's at hand, it's time to repent and believe. What activities should they do in addition to preaching? They were instructed, the apostles of Jesus, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely have received, freely give. They cannot give out in the power of God if they have not received it in the first place. So our lesson is called the call of the disciples. What is our lesson for life? Followers of Jesus are destined to be sent out by him around the block or around the world. In other words, you're following Jesus. You're not going to be stationary. God's going to send you forth, and he will anoint you to do wonderful acts in his name. Remember to visit our Facebook page, Teach All Nations, Education, and thank you for liking our page. Also go to our homepage to subscribe to the free monthly Issachar Teaching e-letter, bringing future-ready advice to your inbox with articles about the Bible, victorious Christian living, and current events in the light of God's Word. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the call of the disciples and their sending forth as apostles. Help us to remember we're all called to discipleship, and we're all called to go. Either near or far, the call is still there. So we thank you, Father, that you have plans for us to prosper us and not harm us, to give us hope in the future, in Christ's matchless name, amen. Today's On The Rock was brought to you by Teach All Nations. If you would like more information about this ministry, to download podcasts, view our online store, attend special events, sign up for our teaching newsletter, make a donation to support this ministry, or to invite Dr. Camille to speak, log on to www.tan.org.au or write to us at Post Office Box 493, Mount Waverley 3149. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.